you know me well, you know that there are two major franchises that consume much of my life right now. One of which is obviously Precure, and the other is Type Moon's Fate franchise. For me, it's a franchise that covers everything I love about anime and good storytelling in general. Sure, it does get kind of worry, especially with the original light novels, to the point that you can kind of see them as like the fanfics of the Dark Flame Master or something. But when it tackles subjects like what is true heroism and what it means to live in the moment, then I'm all ears and eyes, especially if they're being animated by you for the bowl. However, we're not here to talk about amazing epics like Fate Zero or even the Olympus chapter going on right now. But I will take a quick sec to flex my 5 star collection. But yeah, while I love quoting and analyzing Kitsugu's very troubled psyche and struggles with maintaining his very flawed beliefs of what it means to be a hero and have been able to relay it back to Precure, I do kind of prefer it when Fate is just more of a laid back slice of life show. <laughs> In my opinion, FGO is at its best when the characters are just able to be themselves and do what they want, be it hanging out or sipping hard for their kings. And of course, the One Fate series that I've actually made whole videos for on this channel, and has become even more relevant now thanks to the current season, has been today's menu for the Emya family. I just find it to be the most comforting Fate series, with everyone just being able to chill and not trying to end each other in ways I really can't show on YouTube. But yeah, for the sake of the current Precure season that, as of the time of this recording, is still on indefinite hiatus due to defective firewalls, we do want to try to temporarily fill that void with the revival of some cooking videos like we did with Kira Kira back in the day. Though, unlike with that show, they haven't really provided us with recipes for the dishes that are actually featured in Delicious Party, and instead have just given us some really simplistic snacks based on the energy fairies. The one for Pamu Pamu is just a dessert sandwich made from store-bought bread with a lot of cream, sound familiar, and some fruits. They also just so happen to encourage using special cookie molds made specifically for the show's merch line, but I'm sure that's just a happy little coincidence. But yeah, since I guess because the bundle gang stole those recipes or something, we'll just have to turn to the Emya household for that. And while they don't have any recipes for making bread or noodles from scratch, there are still some sandwich and gratins that we could tackle in the future. However, for today, we'll tackle our main character Yui's favorite dish, and the one that somehow cases the title of every episode in it, Omurice. A wholesome and conceptually simple dish of fried rice topped with a soft omelet. This particular recipe, as far as I can tell, was made specifically for the anime adaptation, as I haven't been able to find a corresponding manga chapter, at least the first six volumes I bought on Bookwalker, hashtag not sponsored. It comes from episode 11, and rather than having Shiro Emiya do the cooking, as most chapters and episodes do, this one featured Archer in the kitchen, likely in prep for his future career at Caldea. And yes, I think by now, most of us know about the connections between this character and Shiro, but regardless, it's still a very different character with a very different VA. By the way, I got this exact recipe and ingredient list from a video on Aniplex's official YouTube channel. We'll provide a link in the description. Believe me, Junichi Suabe narrating a cooking video is something you need to hear. For now though, why don't we kill two birds with one stone by tackling my two favorite franchises with one dish in the form of some fluffy omu rice and hope that we don't mess things up. Okay, so like any recipe of this nature, we're going to start off by cutting up our ingredients. For this one, we're actually going to use two cutting boards for reasons I'll explain in just a minute, and not just because my bigger wooden board has a massive crack in it. Jeez, I really need to buy a new one. Still, it's in good enough shape for our purposes here, as the first thing we want to do is finally dice up a quarter of an onion, followed by a couple of mushrooms, as thinly as you can, preferably more than me and my limited knife skills can pull off. With the produce done, we can now move on to the protein. protein. Now, omurice can be made many different ways with, of course, many different meats. Thus, we can't say with absolute certainty what sort of fried rice Yui was eating in her dish. 
However, going back to Doki Doki, when Makoto tried her hand at the dish, she made what seems to be the most popular version with chicken fried rice that just so happens to be what Archer made too. Thus, we're just gonna cut up about 60 grams worth of boneless chicken thighs here, and yeah, you can probably guess why we decided to use two cutting boards for this operation. Just because they're gonna end up in the same pan doesn't mean you should risk salmonella poisoning from all of this raw chicken juice. Handling raw chicken? Best part of the job. Finger licking good. I would also recommend using a slightly larger cutting board. I just bought this one new from Walmart because I figured it wouldn't clutter up my counter space. Plus it was cheap, but for the sake of your fingers, maybe splurge a little on a bigger guy. Anyway, we're just gonna cube this bird into small bite-sized pieces and we'll be good to actually start cooking. With both versions of this dish that appeared in Precure, they clearly topped it with ketchup, and while I certainly have nothing against the topping, in fact we are going to use it in just a minute, for this recipe, I think they wisely decided to not exactly double up on the stuff by subbing it with some nice hot tomato sauce that will add that extra layer of flavor and yet still match up with the ketchup that we are going to use. The sauce itself is really easy to make, I've actually made it several times after this, and used it on obviously pasta, as well as any egg dish aside from just omelettes, goes great on some sunny side up. Anyway, we're just gonna start like how many sauces do, with a little garlic oil, with olive oil and minced garlic, and yes, I'm using the stuff from the bottle, and the recipe does suggest mincing a single fresh clove, but I think this is just as good, plus less cleanup for me. Now of course, feel free to use the fresh stuff, as well as tell me how wrong I am in the comments below. Anyway, when you start to smell the garlic, we're just gonna dump in a whole can of tomatoes. Now this recipe didn't specify what sort of tomatoes to use, I'm using diced ones here, but I've also tested it with some whole tomatoes and then mashed it up with a stick blender, which does let you control the texture better. Still, like with the garlic, I think you should just go with what's easiest for you. And after it's heated through a little, we're just gonna add in some salt and pepper obviously, but also some sugar to cut through the acidity and an ingredient you might recognize if you watched our salmon videos, some ground up consomme cube. I don't know if this is a common ingredient in Japanese cooking or just something the author of the original manga uses a lot, but either way, it's pretty brilliant as these things are packed with a ton of flavor. Anyway, we're just gonna use about half of it, maybe less, and then save the rest for later. Everything else you can adjust to your taste, though maybe consider adding in a little more sugar if it tastes a little too acidic for you. Last up, we're just gonna throw in a little knob of butter to thicken it up and give it some extra richness, and we're good. Again, this is a great sauce that you can easily make any time outside of your favorite East and Western fusion cuisines. We're just gonna leave it on the actual stove back there on low heat, which yes, I would normally use for my cooking and not this dinky little portable stove, but I can't get a good camera angle over there, so we'll just have to go with this. Not as though he can escape from other technical issues like my video files getting corrupted. Still, I can at least say that we cooked the chicken while well in some olive oil. Again, I hope I don't have to explain the importance of cooking your chicken thoroughly. And then follow that up with the onions and mushrooms. And after all that's well incorporated, we're going to add in the rice. Now, when cooking fried rice, it is best to use grains that have dried out and lost a lot of their moisture. It makes it so they can absorb more of the oils and juices in the pan. This is actually from my breakfast a few days before, but you could also use some freshly cooked rice that's been cooled and dried out on a plate. Again, just do what's ever easiest for you. Anyway, time to bring back our previous condiments, minus the sugar of course, and again, I'm definitely using all of this remaining consomme because it is amazing. And last up comes the aforementioned ketchup. Two tablespoons, which yes, I measured with this plunger thing because I'm a bit of a geek, but you don't have to be this exact. Anyway, we're just gonna get all this stuff while folded into each other, maybe give it a taste, probably not with your mixing spoon, but whatever, it's good. And with that, we're also gonna move this pan back to my stove, as well as this out of the way, and perform the most important step of making this dish, hitting your head against the counter and getting yourself psyched up for this last part because believe me, it isn't going to be easy. Okay, so traditionally for om rice, there are two ways you can combine the fried rice and the eggs. The first way was how Makoto and the Nagomi Diner did, just by dumping the rice into the middle of the omelette and wrapping it up like a roll. Or like how they do it with the title cards and folding up a slightly undercooked omelette and then putting it atop the rice so that when you cut into it, the eggs unfold and cover the rice in a golden fleece. It is nothing short of pure beauty and something I've never succeeded at making, so this is going to be quite the daunting challenge, but we gotta do this. Okay, so obviously we're gonna need some eggs, three in this case, and let's see if we can crack all of them cleanly with just one hand. Okay, that's one... 
two, and I'll count that as three. Hey, at least I do it better than these two. Anyway, just going to use our chopsticks to mix them well, and let's not forget a little salt. Then, then we're just going to heat our new clean pan with some olive oil, and once it's heated to about medium high, we're just going to add some butter atop uh, our oil, so yeah, it's not just for non-stick purposes. This is a rather decadent dish that I'm pretty sure goes well over the 500 kilocalories that you eat punches with. But anyway, while that also takes a sec to heat, we're just going to plate up our rice and try to get it into an oval shape, just like how our omelette should end up. You might also want to flatten it out for reasons we'll get to in just a second. But with that, it's time for the big event. Take a deep breath. Here we go. Okay, so I think the trick is that you want to try and cook the bottom of the eggs to just about done, while also maintaining the upper layers to half cooked or so. To do this, we're just going to constantly shake the pan while stirring with our chopsticks. Also, maybe try not to knock your portable stove out of frame. But yeah, once it's just starting to look solidified, yet also half cooked on top, you can start folding your eggs in on themselves. And once you get one half folded into the center, we'll just switch to my spatula for the other side, as that side should be a little bit more cooked. And then we're just gonna lightly tap the handle of the pan to loosen up the eggs and get ready for a flip. Oh. Oh. Okay, I think we did. We did. Uh, okay, we'll just split the difference and call that belly flop. Anyway, I'm not sure if we just didn't cook the eggs quite enough, but the omelette wasn't exactly cooperating when we tried to get it out of the pan, and when we tried to force it out, we just barely missed the target. As a result, it half opened on its own, and we couldn't get that awesome blankening effect. Still, with a little prying from our knife, we could kind of get it. Oh. Oh, don't rub it in. Besides, you can always cover up your feelings with a little sauce and also turn the play around and there, the perfect thumbnail. And yeah, we're also going to serve this with a little extra sauce on the side because again, this stuff tastes great. Though as for the main event, um, yeah, it's amazing. While I can assure you they're not undercooked or anything, the eggs are still super fluffy and perfectly wrap around the rice and sauce like a blanket. And if you like tomatoes, like me, you'll be in heaven, and even if you don't, the sugar helps keep their acidity to a bare minimum. For now though, I'm just gonna take this off to the side and quickly finish it off, both because it's delicious, and so that Gentle can't steal a fairy in the middle of my meal. Sorry girl, you'll just have to get takeout again. I hope you enjoyed this old cooking video, and maybe even give this a shot, if you're brave enough, and the ingredient list and recipe will be in the description below. For me, it was really fun revisiting this stuff and creating a new setup at my new apartment. And I think we managed to get some better lighting at the very least. As for next week though, we'll try to turn out another video of some sort, and hopefully it'll be the last week of Delicious Party's unplanned vacation, and if not, well, at least this finally came out. So look forward to that. Until then though, farewell for now my friends, and I will master you even if it kills me.